this today um, has given me a lot of pleasure and I'm really looking forward to sharing this story with you for many reasons. One of course is because I started this in my 40s and I'm very proud of that, you know. Uh, this is like a second career and, and this is like something that I've started uh, in my 40s and I always tell the young, and I hear a lot of young people nowadays say, oh my God, I'm 28, my life is over. I'm like, I started this in my 40s. So you've got a long way ahead of you. That's one. And the other is because I think I'm one of those few people who actually in her 40s is doing what she believes is her passion something that I really enjoyed when I was very young, which is speaking. I've actually somehow found my career in my 40s around my passion, which I think is big because not many people do that. And not you, you don't have to do that. But if you do, if you find your passion and you can make it a career, I think it's just so beautiful. So which is what I want to speak about. Um, I am a trainer, corporate trainer. I'm a motivational speaker. And I also create content around my own subject matters. And today I will speak a lot about personal branding as well. It's something that came up in a lot of the presentations that I saw today. And that has been the biggest reason for my success. So I'm actually going to take you through my journey of how I built my brand and how people are now able to find me for work. Um, I, in 2012, I was working with Kingfisher Airlines. And when that folded up, um, I really didn't want to make a CV and go look for another job. I thought, you know, this is an opportunity. Instead of feeling, oh my God, now I don't have a job. I just thought, I'm actually generally very, very positive all the time. So I said, let me just make use of this opportunity and see if I could do something of my own. Something of my own. We all love that phrase but I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was clueless. So I thought I'll give myself some time. I'll give myself like a year or so to figure things out and see if I can find something that I'm good at and I can do as a career, but something of my own. So I really didn't want to make a CV. Um, in my marketing career of many years, the 12, 13 years that I've worked in marketing, I had mostly done events or activations as we call them in brands. Um, and I enjoyed events. Also, one thing my husband always told me, he said, you start, if, you, if you want to start something of your own, look at strengths that you have from your past life, right? Try and use those strengths. What is it that you've done before? What is that extra edge? What is that unfair advantage you have? Because when you start something of your own, you can use that. And I look back at my career and I thought that, you know, I understand events and I have a huge vendor list. So if I want to start something around this, it would be so easy for me to just call up these vendors and start events. But I was also very clear, I didn't want to do these large, um, you know, events with selling tickets and all of that, that I did not want to do. So I was very clear that I wanted to do events, but not clear on what kind of events. So I started with employee engagement events, you know, all large corporates have these fun Fridays, team buildings. Uh, those kind of events. So we would do that. So this, for example, this photo is of a corporate park in Pune. And um, we had done, we had launched their food court and they had this theme, uh, which was a casino theme for some reason. And we'd done all these, um, you know, this decoration, etc. So I built a team and this is what we used to do. But here's the um, thing. I love speaking. When I was a child, I in school, I got my first, um, you know, speaking experience when I was 13. My teacher had selected me for a debate. And, um, you know, I went up on stage and I spoke. I wasn't so good. I was very nervous also. But I enjoyed the experience. And I also realized that I was very articulate on stage. I was one of those few people who really had no problem speaking in front of people. I enjoyed public speaking and I continued with that. So in school, I did a lot of debating, a lot of public speaking. In college in Delhi, I was in Delhi, in Delhi University, I started taking up a lot of emceeing, um, you know, opportunities. So you make a lot of pocket money and you enjoy what you do. But I never thought of it as a career. Now, when I look back, I realized that maybe I should have looked at it as a career, but I did not. Uh, because... I mean, what career can you make out of speaking? And this was a good, you know, 20, 22 years back. So I did what most people with decent marks do. I did an MBA and then I got into marketing and advertising. Um, but when I started this, you know, when I, and I was not called She Means Business then. Uh, the employee engagement events, the company that I set up was called Life Is More. 
because life is more than just your nine to five. Even at work, you can do so many interesting things. But what used to happen was we used to hire an MC, and the MC is doing her job. But I would take the mic because I felt I could engage with the crowd better. I would take the mic and take away her role. You know, I would be emceeing those events, and then I realized this is silly. I just need to do something more around this. You know. So then I thought about it and I started hosting corporate events and I also developed a few workshops because I believe in learning, um, you know. So I developed a few workshops around stuff that I'm good at, which is public speaking. So I developed workshops around presentation skills. I also believe that, you know, one should have impactful presence. So I also developed workshops around impactful presence. So body language, confidence, everything that I was good at, because I felt again, unfair advantage. This is something that I understand. I don't want to learn something and then impart that knowledge. What is inherently something that I know, I want to only impart that knowledge. So I developed workshops and I started, I started going back to these same corporates and they gave me a chance. And that's how I actually started doing this. Um, about six years back. So 2012, about two years I floated, not knowing what to do. Then I started Life is More. And about six years back, I pivoted to a learning facilitation because I felt this is what I loved. Now, in one of those workshops, it was a leadership workshop for a pharma company, leadership workshop, and there were 30 men and there were no women. And I remember thinking that, how is it possible that this company has no women in the pipeline for leadership? Right. I'm very disturbed by it. So I remember after the workshop, I was having dinner with my husband. And that's when the idea of She Means Business was born. I said, I want to do something for women as well. But what is it that I do? So I started with a chat show on YouTube. I had no idea about YouTube at all. I started reaching out to women and I said, you know what? We need more women role models because if there are no role models, then other women, there's no inspiration. And we can't continue to have Oprah Winfrey and Indra Nui. I mean, they're great role models, but we need more role models who are very accessible and who are younger and every woman can look at them and say, oh, if she's done it, I can do it too. So that's how I started making this chat show called She Means Business Chat Show. And that is how the name She Means Business was born. So now I had a YouTube channel. I set it up. I set it up. I learned everything about YouTube. Then I went and shot. So today now you see a lot of podcasts, but I did this like a good, I started this a good you know, four, five years back one camera, two mics, an editor who would help me. And I set up this She Means Business chat show and the name kind of stuck. So, you know, She Means Business became me. I became, you know, She Means Business. The Prika Singh means business. So life is more got junked. And what happened was I became the She Means Business girl. She Means Business who also does workshops and she does all this content. And this is, you know, what I want to speak about really. Um, when I started the YouTube journey, you know, when I started putting up videos on YouTube, I first started with these interviews, right? And people started noticing them. People started seeing them. And uh, then I realized this is a huge opportunity. I mean, I have this channel. Today, I have about 12 and a half thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube. But then they were much lesser. And I realized that here's a channel I have that people are watching. Can I use this to market myself as well as a speaker? Because, you know, I was just another trainer. Barring the few people who had worked with me, I would do the same thing that every trainer does, which is go to HR, um, you know, pitch myself, fight and negotiate on pricing, and, you know, may not even get the project. So much hard work, so much negotiation, because there are so many trainers in the market. And that's when I realized that instead of doing this, what if I were to actually market myself on social media with what is it that I talk about, right? So I started writing and I started making videos on the subjects that I was looking for work in, which is presentation skills, presence, um, you know, confidence, body language. I started making videos on that and I started putting it up on YouTube. And they started doing really, really well. And so that's how my YouTube journey started. And I read up a lot on YouTube and three to four videos a month I would put up. It was a lot of hard work. 90% of my topics were related to my workshop subjects. And then I kept on with it, you know. So when Shorts was launched a couple of years back, I started making shorter videos. Today, I have 12,650 subscribers. But by now, I was becoming very smart with marketing because 
when i had to approach hr all i had to do was to send a link to my youtube channel they could see how i spoke they could see the topics that i would speak up, speak on and it was like doing like a sample workshop for them right so it really cut short the time that i took to reach out to people and sell also people started speaking about me so now my pricing you know the value that people were able to see and how i was able to differentiate myself that started happening right so now instead of saying okay you or negotiating on my pricing because there was a pull factor people were calling me and because now people began to see she means business and recognize she means business i was able to command better pricing and that's when i started understanding the power of your personal brand as well now which was about a couple of years back i realized that i'm going to actually focus on building a personal brand completely focus on that and to me this is not um this and what i've learned now is that this is not about showing off it is not about building random motivational content it is not about likes and followers it is just about creating opportunities for yourself that's it your personal brand you have to look at it as creating opportunities for yourself don't get swayed in by you know likes numbers don't feel scared about being out on social media and talking about your work you know achievements somebody spoke about showcasing achievements i do that all the time i how will people know what i'm good at or what i've done till i tell them what is the point then you know so i need to go out and tell people about my achievements i have completely gotten over any kind of inhibitions i have so if i'm doing a lot of women's day activities i will make a lot of posts and put it out because that will get more people to come to me next women's day or for whatever for workshops so i began to understand the power of personal branding um completely two years back then i sat down and thought let me do this in a very focused way till then i was still getting workshops and so my it was 50 50 you know i was still reaching out to people selling my products and people were also reaching out to me but two years back i decided okay let's really up the game so i sat down and i thought about where is my customer you know my customer is hr and my customer is business heads of corporates uh, where are they they are on linkedin i had a linkedin profile but it wasn't very um, you know i wasn't really focusing on it so much uh, two years back i decided okay linkedin let's just go to linkedin and let's figure out what we can do with linkedin now i started building presence on linkedin again it's get, it's very easy to get carried away uh you can you know you can do um uh, all kinds of things on linkedin you can write uh, motivational stuff you can get hungry for likes you can get swayed by all of that but again like i said be very clear on your goal so i told myself my goal is to get more with speaking assignments my goal is to get more workshops you know so what is it that i do so i started again the same kind of product that i was putting out on youtube i started putting that on linkedin i started writing about confidence body language presentation skills um you know all of the subjects that i speak on and gender diversity because that is something very close to my heart and that is what she means business is all about and um, it blew so for the first 6 7 months nothing happened because it's a slow process but after that you know there's this um, i don't know how many of you have read tipping point by malcolm gladwell it was tipping point and i actually saw that you know i actually saw the tipping point in my life with the linkedin post that i've been putting up suddenly there was a burst of people reaching out to me um uh, you know um saying that you know would you would you do this workshop would you do something else um you know uh, would you uh, speak for us would you create content now because i was creating video content as well i get corporates who write into me saying that will you create bite sized you know content for us so i actually work with a lot of corporates where i do series of content this is an opportunity i didn't even think about i did not even think that you know video content i would be creating for corporates i thought speaking and you know workshops was all that i would be doing but no um a company came and told me that we want to do uh, you know presentation skills but but bite sized you can you make like one minute videos for us which you can keep sending to people on whatsapp put it up on our portal because it's everyday learning i started making those so first of all i became very good with content because you know practice does make you perfect and it's something that i've been very consistent with and because for me the goal was to get more work and not look you know like good on camera or you know just get more followers i was able to get over my fear of creating video content video content i cannot begin to tell you and you know i i really can, whatever field you're in video content you know is uh people get to see you people can put a face to your name 
uh, people understand how credible how trustworthy how your experience by just looking at your video content and i have done a case study to see that uh, businesses that are doing video content are actually there is this um, dermatologist that i follow in gurgaon i i discovered her on linked uh, on instagram some time back um you know and she puts up these very valuable one minute videos on you know skin care and and her you know her following has blown up and it's so difficult to get an appointment with her you know my sister in gurgaon told me that you know it's so difficult to get an appointment and it was not like that earlier is just now it's so difficult because when you're showcasing your expertise then you stand out among the sea of dermatologists in gurgaon right and a lot of people come and tell me but why should i share my expertise because i'm giving things away for free you're not you're just differentiating yourself people will still go to a dermat if you are a trainer physical trainer people will still go to a physical trainer the chances of them coming to you if they see that you're an expert at it just goes up people will still go to a dietitian you can give as many good free tips on the internet people will still go to a dietitian so it's preferable they come to you if you built a brand so the power of personal branding and the power of looking at personal branding as something that helps you create opportunities for yourself you know i just look at it like that that i'm just creating opportunities for myself and i call it two kinds of opportunities one is vertical vertical opportunities is within your own organization you get a, a, a you know a promotion or you get a goal with a different a better organization but what is most interesting is the horizontal opportunities these are things like speaking engagements these are things like a book deal these are things like i'm doing a panel today which is sponsored by viacom in the evening which is a physical you know panel that i'm doing all because people have seen my work somewhere or the other so you know i so this is something and it doesn't matter what your uh, business is i think it it really doesn't matter which field you're in what business you're in creating some kind of content and figuring out what is it that makes you comfortable in creating a personal brand and differentiating yourself and marketing yourself will take you to that tipping point and that's the way it is nowadays and just a couple of things that i want to leave you with don't take stress to create content a lot of people tell me but what content should i create are abhi ek to i have to do my work and then i have to create content also what is this and i always say just share your expertise you're good at something right you are doing something which you're good at you have built companies just talk about that just talk about your company the behind the scenes what is happening some new client um you know so just talk about your business that's all people want to know about really and that's all that showcases so don't get consumed by you know oh my god my content has to look a certain way or it has to read very well or it has to be perfect it doesn't don't get into that race at all that's a very silly race just create content about your business and that's more than enough and there are so many platforms nowadays so figure out where your customer is and you can also figure out what is the medium of content if you don't like doing video you can create a newsletter you know just creating i'll tell you i have a whatsapp i'm sure all of us have this but i have a broadcast i have a broadcast group a lot of people have uh, newsletters i have a broadcast group i tell people join my broadcast and you will get a nugget of uh, knowledge twice a week and i actually send that i send book recommendations i send youtube recommendations i send some course that you can work on i have now so you have a limit to your broadcast group so now i have four broadcast groups because people have joined it now these are people who tell other people about my work so now the network is so strong that you know i so my pitching myself and my getting work through pull has actually now it's almost like a 10 and 90 only because of personal branding so and also engage authentically with people on whatever platform you choose to be reach out to people of interest that's what linkedin has done to me the other thing that has worked very well for me and which i would again tell all of you as well is the power of storytelling you know if you if you if you see this presentation i've told you a lot of stories i've told you stories about kingfisher how it folded up and i you know did not want to create a cv so everything is about storytelling each of you should have a story that you tell people you know people remember stories so what is your story why did you start what you do what is that one big achievement uh, what what is your vision what is it that you want to do figure out two or three stories i'll give you an example if i told you today let like, think about vinita singh we all heard of vinita singh the sugar uh, founder the first thing that comes to mind is how she kicked a 1 crore ki naukri at iim to become an entrepreneur 
you know at shark tank she spoke about it she speaks about it everywhere that's her story so she's built a story which makes her memorable and how she's into fitness and how she has failures these are stories she's built and she repeats the stories all the time and now people repeat those stories for her that's the brand she's built you know it's it's so organic so initially she, she spoke about all of this and then people started speaking about it so everybody who wants to interview her will ask her a question of why did you kick a banker or ki nokri that's how people remember her so that's her story and such a powerful uh, you know uh, story that she has indra nui built a story indra nui was the first president ceo of uh, pepsi but she built a story she built a story about how you know the whole uh, life work balance whether it works or not you know that video went viral so now women find indra nui very very so i ask a lot of women but why do you find her inspirational because she spoke that women can't have it all i'm saying but there's more to indra nui why did she become the first ceo of pepsi does anybody know that story nobody knows that story because she's built that whole you know work life and everything but the story is that she really went against management to change the course of pepsi pepsi was a sugary drinks company she changed it to a company uh, which also had healthy products so she said our philosophy should be not just fun for you fun for you is okay pepsi fun for you good for you which is water and better for you which is the juices and gatorade which they bought so she changed the course of the company but nobody knows that everybody thinks of her as this woman who you know empowers other women etc so stories are very important so build your stories what is your story and your story doesn't have to go out on social media your clients your prospective clients they should know your story and they should then reach out to you and they should tell other people uh, you know your story and that's the most powerful way uh, really to build a brand so if you look back on brands that have been built they all have a story uh, repeating those stories and ensuring people remember you with that story is very important my stories are you know how i used to speak a lot as a child and in my 40s i discovered rediscovered my passion and built a career out of it people love that story and it reinforces the fact that i really love speaking right and this whole story of how uh, kingfisher airlines folded up and i didn't want to make a cv and i didn't want to go look for another job people love it because deep in their heart everybody wants to do that you know everybody wants to start something of their own again when i start a corporate workshop i start with this story and everyone I was like yeah yeah so inspirational you know i have to listen to her i have grabbed their attention like that you know because i need to grab 30 40 new people in an organization i need to grab their attention right so um so stories build your stories find a story that is an authentic genuine story tell people tell people when you meet them tell people on social media and you will see the power of um you know people remembering you better and people just wanting to work with you better because once people get to know you they just want to work with you better talk about your achievements talk about who you are talk about how you started the business what differentiates your business and as founders i feel founders are the best people to talk about uh, you know their businesses and founders who do that um, you know look at the zero dha founders look at all of these people it helps you to scale immediately because you know you are your best marketer and you are your best seller i have realized this i have realized this i can keep a team of people uh, to sell my workshops but what sells most is the fact that i go out and create content and i build a personal brand and people call me because of i'm really sorry i'm going to end in any case i think